ਸਮੱਸਿਆ ਹੋਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦੀ ਅੰਦਰ ਗਿਆਨ ਤੁੰ ਹੈ ਵੀ ਰਿਟਨ ਐਨੀ ਪੁਸ਼ਪਾਂਜਲੀ ਨੋ ਨੋ ਪੁਸ਼ਪਾਂਜਲੀ ਕਿਆ ਘਾਸ ਕਾਟ ਰਿਹਾ ਥਾ ਕਹਾ ਥਾ ਨਾ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਹੈ ਵੀ ਰਿਟਨ ਐਨੀ ਪੁਸ਼ਪਾਂਜਲੀ ਵਾਟ you are cutting grasses no then why i told you eh i can uh ah, but i told that you should request all to write on so you should speak so today is the first day of our gurudev nitya leela pravishtam vishnu pa shishna bhakti pragyan ke shavashan mara on the on the birthday of gurudev in our disciplic order we make dyas puja so we will glorify and offer pushpanjali by glorifying him aage se ye sab kar kar nahi rakhta hum aayenge tab karega kundrik maharaj ji hai na now we can glorify him pushpanjali लोग गिरा होता है सर जितना आफत आज कर ली सब Today is the very auspicious appearance day of Mr. Jyotishya Om Shankar Ashtakara Shishima Bhakti Pratyan Keshava Goswami Maharaj. We have all come together here to hear the glorification of this most auspicious. Oh, Prabhu can come here? Oh, you should come forward. Come more, more. Go. The most auspicious eternal associate of Chitani Mahaprabhu coming in the line of Shri Rupa Goswami being the very intimate and dear associate of Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. So before speaking, I offer my humble obeisances unto the Lord Shri Bhakti, my Guru Day. Om Vishnu Pahara, Om Nam Sapari Rakashwari, Tatar Shri Shri Srimad Bhakti, Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And my own Dhanabhas unto all the devotees present. Actually, it is very difficult to properly glorify such a great personality. Unless one is on the level of transcendence, meaning that one is situated on the platform of pure devotional service, one cannot properly glorify the eternal associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Sri Radha Krishna, who are <coughs> eternally liberated, always engaged fully in serving their Lordships. So according to my ability, I will try to offer my Pushpanjali. Sri La <coughs> Bhakti Pratyankesha Kumaras was appeared in this world 
101 years ago. He appeared in a family, aristocratic family of landowners. With those who had a lot of property. And from his early days after appearing in this world, he did not speak. He was silent for quite some time. And his mother and aunties, they became very worried. Everyone became worried when he would, why he did not speak, why he did not utter anything. Then one visitor, guest, arrived at the house and he suggested that you may uh, go to some low-caste families who live nearby and ask them for some of the remnants of the food that they have and then you give it to your bima uh, to your bima yeah. Even, and you will see after that he will start speaking. <laughs> so, mother and aunties, they realized that we may have to do this, although they could not really conceive the importance or the magic about this. But anyway, they went to these families, and it happened to be that the family they approached was a Vaishnava family, even though they were low caste they were always engaged in emotional activities. <coughs> and they had, they offered some remnants of their cooked rice to mother of Bhima and took it home and offered it to the boy. And at that time, after taking some of these grains, he started to speak and all became very happy. <laughs> so this is a very wonderful thing that he would not utter anything before he would receive some prasad from Vaishnava devotees. So after growing up, at young age, he would go to school and study in school even with the um, professors Chaitanya Charitamrita and other books. And he found that the teachers, they could not properly teach him about the things which they were discussing. So he felt that this education is not really going to help me yeah, much in the sense of getting a proper education. And he became so much attracted to be with Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. Yeah. He had met Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, his devotees, and he was still in school at that time. So then after going on for some time in school, he decided to fully join, and not that he hadn't joined already, but to fully live with the devotees in the mud. And he left his family, came, lived in the mud, and became one of the very their associates, Vaishnavas in the mud, always serving Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada's mission in so many, many ways. Yeah. <coughs> then one time um, there was a message, message coming from his family that his mother was very sick. And they requested Bino to come and be with his mother whilst he would leave her body. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada said, Yes, you should go and be with your mother. At once you should go. She has requested this and it is proper that you should go there. Then, uh, at that time, Bino Brahmachari the name of Srila Bhakti Pratyam Keshava Maharaj. He could not really go to his family. He didn't feel that uh, he should go. He was worried. Yeah. So he, he hid himself anywhere. And after some time, 
one day or so, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada said, has, you know, Ramachari gone to his mother? The devotees asked, uh, replied that, no, he is somewhere, yeah, in Math hiding, yeah. So please call him at once. So you know, Brahmachari came to his Guru Maharaj and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada asked, why you did not go to your mother? I requested you, I told you, you should go and be with her. Then Srila, then Bino Brahmachari, he started to cry. And he said to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, his Guru Maharaj, that after so many lifetimes, I have come and I have been so fortunate to be in the association of your good self, of bona fide Vaishnavas. Yeah. This is the real goal of the existence for the living entity in this material world. And I am so much worried if I would go to my mother and at the last breath of her life she would request me, oh, my dear son, please you look after all the properties of our family, then I cannot refuse. So I could not really make the decision to go and be with my mother at this time. And then Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada became so happy and blessed him. At another occasion, we all heard about the glorious activities of Srila Gorki Shodas Babaji Maharaj, one of the prominent Acharyas in our Gaudiya Vaishnava line. He is the spiritual master of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. And he was, he was the, uh, the epitome or the wonderful example of renunciation. He did not like to mix with anyone who was not interested in Krishna Bhakti, pure Bhakti. Therefore, he always avoided to be in contact with worldly minded people, the residing in Navadvip, and sometimes he would lock himself up so that no one would disturb his bhajan. At one time he had locked himself into the latrine for many days. Everyone became so much worried and asked him, Oh, Babaji Maharaj, please come outside. It is not a fit place for you to do your bhajan. Then Srila Gorkishwadas Babaji Maharaj would answer that the smell of materialistic people is so bad that I prefer to be in the smell of the latrine yeah, and do my bhajan here. Yeah, please leave me alone. No, please open the door. We want you to come. We will help you to get a good place where you can do your bhajan. Then Srila Gopishwada Prabhupada Maharaj would reply, I am so much weak, I don't feel good, I cannot open the door. Yeah, please leave me alone. So this went on for quite some time, many days. Then one day, Binod Ramachari and one of his god-brothers, both disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, came and visited uh, came to see Srila Gorkishwadas Babaji Maharaj. They knocked on the door and said, We are here. Oh, Babaji Maharaj, please give us your darshan. We have come from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. We are his shishyas, his disciples. Srila Gorkishwadas Babaji Maharaj became so happy. At once he opened the door and said, Please, oh, you are disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati? Come inside quickly. And they came and Srila Prabhupada Babaji was so happy to see them. He gave blessing. He closed the door quickly <laughs> and let them in. And he said, oh, I'm so happy to see you. And at that time he gave his blessings to Binod Brahmachari that whatever obstacles will come yeah, in the practice of devotional service, I will take all the burden on my head. Don't worry. Yeah. 
So we know Brahmachari was so much blessed by the association and the uh, benedictions of such great personalities as Srila Gorki Sardas Bhavaji Maharaj and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. His life was so exemplary yeah, that we can learn how to properly follow in the footsteps of the eternal associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and understand what it means to practice Krishna consciousness in the situation that we are in. Uh, how Srila Bhakti Pratyankeshwara Maharaj was so expert and so soft-hearted and so kind to establish Sri Gauri Abhidanta Samhiti. He established Sri Gauri Abhidanta Samhiti together with Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj in 1941. After the departure of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, there was so much chaos and turmoil in Gaudiyanath. But Dino Dramachari, he was very fixed, one pointed, went on to depend on Krishna, Mahaprabhu's mercy, to continue the mission of his Gurudev. So at that time, 1941, establishing Sri Gaudiya Vedanta Samhiti, yeah, starting to preach all over India. Not starting, but by the uh, institution establishing so many other maths in due course of time, preaching all over India. We are now so fortunate to have the opportunity to also become part of the family of the Gaudiya Vaishnava family. Yeah. All of us being born in Western countries, Eastern countries, being so unfortunate, not knowing what really pure bhakti is, pure religion, pure devotion. Now we have come in the association of real eternal associates of Mahaprabhu, Shishi Radha Krishna, and we are able to receive the blessings on these auspicious moments particularly, but all day, every day, we can remember the glorious uh, appearance of great Vaishnavas, yeah, our Gurudev, and today we are celebrating the appearance of our Param Gurudev. So on these moments we can particularly pray for a special benediction, a special mercy that we become perfect in our uh, attempts to become pure devotees, eternal associates, always engaged in loving devotional services to Guru and Vaishnavas. Pancha Kalpatru Krishna. Because we have Sri Dhan Prabhu, will you speak to us? So, we just heard some very beautiful stories, some pastimes by Rajanath Prabhu. Mm, very good. Describing the glorious character and personality of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj. When Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj took his birth, it's described how he was glowing very brightly. So he had a nickname of Jonah, which means glow one. And from his birth, as Rajanath Prabhu was describing, there were many auspicious signs about his body. He was an extremely beautiful child. It's described how his arms were long and his he had very artistic fingers and his body was very soft. 
and Gurudev describe it once in Rupa Sanatana how the Vaishnavas come only to see the good in everybody. And he described this in relationship to Srila Bhakti Prakyan Keshav Maharaj. So, when Srila Bhakti Prakyan Keshav Maharaj was very young, maybe 12, 13 years old, in school, they had a group of boys who would make collections and uh, help needy people. And at that time, Bhima was in the um, charge of his mother primarily. And she was very firm, disciplinary lady. And on this one particular day, um, Bhima arrived home late. And his mother was very, very worried. Every day he would come home at a certain time, but this time he was very, very late. So she was waiting with one stick to chastise and correct her son. And then uh, when Bhima came, he was uh, prepared to accept that chastisement. But then his mother was questioning him, well, where were you? And then he was explaining that one particular uh, lady in the village was very sick and in need. And he had made, taken that time to go and uh, help her and help her family. So his mother became very pleased with this. So he would do many uh, merciful activities in the very early days of his life, which would continue into his uh, later years, of course, with his maturity. And when he came to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, there was um, a time when his aunt was with him. And uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta was saying that he would create mats all over the world. And his aunt was saying, well, this is a bit of a dream. Who will actually do this? For? How can you do this? You have nothing at this time. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada Maharaj, he said that, my Vinod, he will, he will take care of this. Because he had full confidence in Vinod's uh, brahmacharis. Uh, managing abilities as well as his deep sense of understanding Siddhanta and Bhakti. So he was very near and dear to his Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And our Gurudev, Srila Narayan Maharaj, he has described many times of the intimate relationship that he also had with his Gurudev. And this is described as Vishrambar Seva. So this word Vishramba, Vigita, the meaning of this word Vishramba, we can break it into two, it's Vigita means devoid of, and Shramba means any awe and reverence. So this Vishramba Seva is paramount importance for the sadhaka on this path to Bhakti, of Bhakti, to understand Radha and Krishna, to link up as a servant of Srimati Radharani. So it's very essential for us to um, hear the uh, pastimes of our Gurudev with his Gurudev in that intimacy. How they would, how he would. It's described. Uh, Gurudev has described how sometimes he would jump on the same bed with his Gurudev, and they would. He would help him write together. They were very near and dear like that. There wasn't this uh, Aishwarya between them. They were very. Uh, intimate. At the same time, of course, there is that foundation of very deep respect. Not that it was ever familiar, but it was pure love. It was a deeply loving relationship. So Gurudev has spoken about this many times. And when I meditate on Shiva Bhakti Pratyam Keshav Maharaj, I always think of his very softness, his great gentility, his great mercy, his sweetness in his relationship with our Gurudev and his sweetness in his relationship with all the uh, devotees in the mat, how he would take care of them personally, he would look after them so well, he would help manage them so well, he would uh, uh, always be so extraordinarily humble, and he would understand the mind and heart of his Gurudev, the story of when uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, he wanted uh, one of the devotees to leave from the temple, he had been causing some problems, 
and he called Vinod uh, uh, Brahmachari to please remove this devotee who had been making a, a difficulty for the other devotees. So, Vinod uh, Brahmachari, he didn't say anything, he just left. And he went and he hid in one room. And he didn't do anything about that. He didn't carry out the instruction of his Gurudev. And then in the evening, uh, it, it was understood by the other devotees that he was still in the mud. So they complained to uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada. And then Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, he called Vinod Brahmachari. He said, why you didn't follow my instruction? I said, you should remove this devotee. And Vinod Brahmachari, he said, that I know your heart is so soft that you, you the real your, your, your real desire was not actually to remove this devotee I know that if I had done this you would have called me and you would have uh, you would have lamented doing this act, action so I'm understanding that because of your mercy you are too much merciful to do this so I declined to carry out that instruction and Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj he was extremely pleased on the integrity and perception of his disciple. Not that his disciple would just follow blindly, but his disciple, Srila Vinod uh, Brahmachari, would very diligently look into the heart of his Gurudev, Manobhishta, and meditate on what was his inner desire, and in this way truly endeavor to please his Gurudev and serve his Gurudev. So with that mood, he could come very close, and this Vishramba Seva, with the highest, our highest aspiration always uh, could be achieved by Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj for his Gurudev and our Gurudev for his Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj. So this mood of mercy, I always remember this time when I offered this homage uh, to Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj. Vrindavan Vilasini, Didi will uh, speak to us. No harm if you are sitting. Because you are too old and you cannot stand, so you can see. No, no I feel scared. Yes. <laughs> First, I'd like to offer my most humble obeisances at the lotus feet of my picture guru, A.C. Bhakti Devanta Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, and next to my shiksha guru, Srila Bhakti Devanta Narayan Maharaj. And then to my Haram Guru Dev, Bhakti Pagyan Keshava Maharaj, and then to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. And I'd like to beg your forgiveness because I get so nervous speaking in front of crowds. I'll do the best I can. And I tried to write something, but I'm a terrible writer, so I scratched it out about ten times. <laughs> so I'll try. When I think of my Haram Guru Dev, I'm so grateful because he has been so instrumental in manifesting the internal desire of Mahaprabhu as enunciated by Srila Rupa Goswami. He explained in his Radhaganod Bahari Kathasakam who Mahaprabhu really is. Mahaprabhu is Krishna. He's Krishna when he's in deep separation from Srimati Radharani and then his hues turns golden or in, when he's being embraced by Srimati Radharani, in deep meditation, his body is turns golden. This is Mahaprabhu. No one else is really revealed in such a beautiful way who is Mahaprabhu. And the rest of this optikam explains in depth the tattva of Mahaprabhu. But in this optikam, it doesn't so much explain what our position is in relationship to Mahaprabhu and in relationship to Radha and Krishna. But by his immense mercy, which is explained in his Prana Mantra, which explains that whoever took shelter of him, or takes shelter, not took, he's always with us. 
Whoever takes shelter of him, he nourishes with extreme devotion, with extreme affection and love, just like a father or a loving guardian. And he's always thinking about the suffering of the living energy and giving nam with praying. So what did he do? He understood the innermost desire of Rupa Goswami as coming down to Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, his Guru Day, which was that this Unat Ujvala Rasa Swa Bhakti Shriyam should be spread all over the world. And so he encouraged our beloved A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada to take sannyas and encouraged him to preach all over the world and to set a foundation so that our beloved Chikcha Guru Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj could come and break open the storehouse of praying, Raj praying and speak it openly like no one else has ever done before. No one else has ever spoken so openly, and he is a direct disciple of our Bharam Gurudev. He has spoken in English to the most fallen person, the highest, Vilak Kushmanjali of Raghunath Das Goswami. Shima Bhagavatam commentary that Vishnath Chakravarti Tagore explaining our real, um, uh, the proper mood to approach Radha and Krishna as a fallen Jiva soul the mood of Amandari. This is the most kindest mercy that he could have done. We don't deserve it, and we're completely overwhelmed by how merciful he is, and we're so grateful that he has sent both Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj and Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj. But they're coming because of him. He has inspired us. Thank you. Thank Maharaj. Can you speak two words? Remorse? 
Yes. Can you start from the right view? And we know Brahmachari was. Uh, so I'm so fortunate to be able to do this service. Why, like prince, we have sat like. So he never gave, get the key, key of the box, but he gave also tea. And then he used to tell, oh, he never called any his disciple like you, Tum and Tumi, but to him only, and one disciple more, Paramananda, Prabhu. They were a special servant of their Guru. Then he became so pleased and happy. And he showed so much. The, the other thing which was omitted, which I caught, <coughs> was that um, uh, and I don't know the details, it was just a mention, but I thought it was significant that. Uh, <coughs> You know, Brahmachari used to sleep in the same room with Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And when he would come in at night, uh, back from doing the collections for the moth, uh, maybe it would be very late, but Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur had already taken rest. And, uh, you know, Brahmachari, the door would be locked, so he would go and knock at the door. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur would have to get up from his sleep to open the door, and the disciples, the other disciples of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur were, were chastising, uh, or were at least talking amongst themselves that this is improper. How can this Brahmachari uh, come and wake up our Gurudev like this? But it was told Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur never complained, and he always opened the door and welcomed the you know, Brahmachari. So, who, uh, how do we know? Who is you know Brahmacharya? Well, how high such a uh, wonderful child of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsha. Again, Siddhanta Essence, not so much. <coughs> He was expert in managing and dealing with people. 
he was even expert in fighting. He was, at the time of when the British were ruling in India, he became a member of the revolutionary uh, force of Subhash Chandra Bose, and he was hiding in the jungles with a rifle and a, and a knife. And the British government, they issued uh, a warrant for his arrest. And even ten years later, they were searching for him after he'd come to the shelter of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And one day, the British uh, police force came to the march and with the warrant for the arrest of uh, Vinod Brahmachari. Uh, but at that time, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur protected him and by his very powerful arguments persuaded them. But can, can't you see? He's become a sadhu. Hmm? How he's completely uh, surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and only serving the Supreme Lord and Hari Guru and Vaishnavas. Hmm? So then, being convinced, they went away. So he was so expert in all things, even at the age of 16, he was managing all the land and the tenants of his which belonged to his family. And then when he came to the Gaudiya Math, he was managing the, the Gaudiya, Gaudiya Math in such a wonderful way that during the time of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sajari Thakur, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sajari Thakur wanted to give sannyas, the renounced order of life, to the Lord Brahmachari. And all the arrangements were made. But at the last moment, the devotees came to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sajari Thakur and said, please don't do this. Because if you give him sannyas, then he will not be, uh, be doing all of the duties of managing and uh, all of the making all the arrangements for the daily life and for the preaching of the mat. And therefore, without Vinod Brahmachari, who is so essential and indispensable in Agordiya Mat, everything will fall apart. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhartha Sazati, he did not give him sannyas. But this is quite apparent. We know that Srila Bhakti Bhagavan Krishna Maharaj has taken sannyas from Srila Rak Bhakti Rakshak Shridhar Goswami Maharaj. But we shall see also uh, in a deeper sense that he has received sannyas from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. How is that? Once um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was doing program and preaching uh, in Navadweep. And because of his very strong preaching, breaking apart all of the misconceptions of uh, Apa Siddhanta, of the Apa Sampradayas, such as caste Brahmins, Aos Bols, Garanda Nagari, Saki Vigs, Kartabhaja, Nedi, Daravesha, and all Apa Sampradayas. So one group of his detractors, they made a plan that they would attack him. So a very violent mob came with sticks and stones and knives and they began to stone Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and it was a very dangerous uh, condition. Their intention was to kill him. So in that time many uh, devotees were afraid and running here and there but Vinod Brahmachari was not at all afraid for his own life but rather forsaking his own safety he just tried to uh, protect Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and he took him and he uh, took him out from the streets into the room of one nearby building and there by force by force he took the cloth, the sannyas cloth of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur and dressed himself in Srila Prabhupada's own cloth and gave his own cloth to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur also he took danda his danda and his uh, Prabhupada gave him all things so Srila uh, Vinod Brahmachari at that time he was Brahmachari, but he would wear white cloth. But he was very tall, and, and he looked quite similar to Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur. So when they exchanged their cloth, then everyone would think that he was actually Srila Prabhupada. And then Srila Prabhupada could escape, and then the very violent mob would come, and they would kill him. So, Sanharada, by the grace of Guru Angaranga, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj, and Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, they both escaped from this very dangerous situation, unharmed. But here we see. He sent Prabhupada to Mayapur mm -hmm. uh, very secretly. And he was there. When he heard that he has reached to Mayapur, then, then, come. then he came. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, police came. But police always supporting other group, mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. 
But anyhow, he came to Mayapur priest. So here we see the example of the disciple, how he is willing to sacrifice everything, even his own life, what to speak of once, but hundreds of times, for the pleasure of his Guru Dev. So Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj is so exemplary in this, in this regard. Also, there are many, many pastimes of Param Guru Dev, how he was such a wonderful preacher and always so fearless. Once upon a time, he was traveling in Bengal with a few brahmacharis, and they came to, they were making a collection for the Navadit Mangal Prakrama. And at that time, there was a terrible flood disaster in that area, and many of the farms were ruined, many people were made homeless, many people, they had uh, no uh, money, they had no food, they had no cloth, they had no homes to live in. And at that time, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj, with a small group of brahmacharis, was uh, moving around that area through the devastation and making some collection when I was doing Pradhan And inviting. And inviting everyone, please come and uh, perform this most auspicious Navadit Mandal Prakrama, whereby one can uh, receive the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They can take, take food for ten days and all arrangements will be done by you. No, nothing to do, everyone can come, no money to be expended, and everyone will be taken care of so nicely. So, in the course of, uh, in the course of moving around this area, they went into another party who were out preaching their philosophy. This was the uh, Communist Party of Bengal, and the leader of the Communist Party of Bengal was there, walking around with his so many associates. And when he met with Param Gurudev, he was so agitated because he was such an atheist. He was such an atheist and he uh, detested sadhus, seeing danga, seeing the red cloth and these things. He became very agitated and angry. And he said to Param Gurudev, what are you doing here? Have you come here to alleviate the suffering of the people, to help them with food and clothing? and to make very nice social arrangements so that everyone can be happy. Hmm? What, are you, what are you doing here? Srila Bhakti Pragyam Keshe Maharaj replied, We have come here to preach the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and we're making some collection and inviting everyone to come to the Navdit Mandal Prakrama. So then the leader of the Communist Party of Bengal, he became so angry and he said, What are you doing? He said, Are you mad? Can you not see the people? They are without food, they are without clothing, they are without homes. They are in need of help, they are in need of donations. And you have come here and you are asking them to give donations. Can you not see the great terrible flood? Then Srila Bhakti Pragan Keshe Maharaj, he looked around and he said, What flood? What are you talking about? Where is the flood? Even though there was so much devastation everywhere. He said, Where is the flood? I cannot see any flood. Hmm? You are speaking of a, of a flood, but even the fire in the end of your cigarette has not been extinguished. Hmm? He was smoking a cigarette. What kind of flood is this? Even the fire in your cigarette has not been extinguished. Hmm? He said, in this world, the jivas are rotating in the cycle of birth and death hmm? without any uh, relief. They have no chance of relief. And after many, many births and deaths, then the time comes when the whole universe is destroyed destroy it in the Pralaya. That means actually there's a flood, the cosmic devastation, when the water rises up from the bottom of the universes and all the planetary systems become submerged in the waters of devastation. So Srila Bhakti Pragan Keshe Maharaj said, we have come here to save the people from this flood. This is actually the flood hmm, from which uh, they should be saved. Hmm. And the, there were many persons like you in the past who tried to do so much welfare work for the people, but because they did not accept the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they did not recognize that we are all the servants of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they were all ruined. We see in the histories of our Veda Vedata and Quran, so many great personalities who were very religious, like Duryodhana, like Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha, and Ravan, 
and they wanted to make a very ideal society. Yet they were devoid of the service tendency for the Supreme Lord and they were all destroyed. And many other atheistic leaders such as Mussolini, Hitler, Napoleon and others, they have tried to make a very perfect society but they all came to a very sticky end. And so if you follow in their footsteps and try to establish some social order but without recognizing the supremacy of the Supreme Lord and engaging everyone in the service of the Lord, then you can know that you are going along the road to complete disaster. So hearing the very strong and uncompromising preaching and conceptions of Param Gurudev, the leader of the Communist Party of Bengal, he was struck dumb, he was unable to speak, and being very angry and agitated and embarrassed, he immediately left that place. He went out from that place. And that prominent uh, leader was Jyoti Basu. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> still his chief, chief minister. minister of Bengal. But he used to fear from our Gurudev. <laughs> so, from Gurudev, there are so we many... will hear so many things in evening. Yes. So, That's little, true. little, everyone. So, I want to spend more time on the, these types of pastimes, but I would like to express something uh, to my limited ability. In appreciation of Prime Gurudev's a uh, very deep realization of the heart of his Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. We have heard how uh, Srila uh, Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj, he was so surrendered, always working very hard, and in this way, the heart of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was always melting for, to uh, give mercy uh, to his very dear disciple, how they were so intimate. And so, being fully uh, the, res the receiver of the mercy of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj has expressed uh, the inner moods of our Sampradaya to the world. He has written that in his Radha Vinod Bihari Tadvastika, he has written that Radha Chinta Niveshena Yashikanti Vilopita, Shri Krishnam Charnam Bande, Radha Lingita Vigraham, that I am praying to the lotus feet of that Krishna, who, Radha Chinta Niveshena, who is feeling the acute pangs of separation from Srimati Radharani, and therefore, feeling the acute pang of separation from Srimati Radharani, he has assumed a golden complexion. So we see in the mats of uh, Sri Gauri Vedanta Samiti, the deities are there, Sri Sri Radha Vinod Bihari. And here we always see that Krishna has a white form. And it's very significant also that Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj, the founder of Chara Iskhan, also um, followed in the moods of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj in installing in many places around the world the white deity of Krishna. In this way, expressing how he is uh, fully uh, in agreement and fully received the conceptions of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj. To see mm, that those who are in the line of Srila Rupa Goswami, those who are doing bhajan in the mood of the maid servants of Srimati Radhika, it is not their desire to think how Srimati Radhika is feeling separation from Krishna how she is crying in separation from Krishna, how she is always rendering service to Krishna. But rather, those in the camp of Srila Rupa Goswami will always think how Krishna, he is feeling separation from Srimati Radhika, how Krishna is crying in separation from Srimati Radhika, and how Krishna is always uh, overwhelmed with eagerness to render whatever little service he can for the pleasure of Srimati Radhika. So, in this way, we can see how Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj has made a very wonderful contribution in expressing the internal moods of his Gurudev and of his whole Sampradaya in this world. So, we know that when Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj would go in the, to the Samadhi of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, after his disappearance, he was put in Samadhi as in Mayapur. So when he would go there, 
on Purkrama, accompanied by thousands and thousands of devotees. Even though he was in the company of thousands and thousands of devotees, still, he was unable to check his very deep, deep uh, loving moods and unable to hide the deep feelings of separation that he felt from his Gurudev. He would come there and even he would be able to utter the name Prabhupada, only saying Prabhu, and then his voice would become choked up and Astrasatvik of hearts would manifest in his body and he would be unable to speak. So, and then somehow or other he would just indicate to any other devotees, yes, you go on speaking because I am un unable to speak. So this is really the symptom of the disciple. Just like Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, after the disappearance of Srila Rupa Goswami, he has prayed, Sanyayate Maha Gostam Garendra Jagarayate Jagaratundayate Kundam Jivatu Rahitasyame Srila Raghunath Das Goswami has prayed, Oh, my Prabhu, Oh, Rupa Goswami, when you were in this world, then at that time, Vrindavan was such a source of joy and happiness for me. But now you have gone. This Vrindavan seems like Shunya, like an empty des desolate void. When you were here, then I was so happy to have the darshan of Giriraj Govardhan. I have written so many prayers glorifying Govardhan. But now you are no longer here. Then Govardhan seems like a python, uh, poised to devour me. And Radhakund, I had taken shelter of Radhakund as my only hope. But, O oh, Rupa Goswami Pai, now you are not here, then Radhakund seems like the gaping mouth of a tigress waiting to devour me. So in this way, everything which once was a source of pleasure for Rishira Raghunath Das Goswami now became a source of intense pain due to separation from his beloved Gurudev, Srila Rupa Goswami. So these are the symptoms of the bona fide disciple. If we are not feeling the intense a separation from our Gurudev, then one cannot say that he is truly a disciple. So we see this in the life of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj. He, he felt such high separation, uh, such intense burning distress within his heart, that he was unable to even utter the name of his Gurudev without uh, choking, without being overcome by these deep sentiments of separation. So this is the symptom of a real disciple. So on this day, I am praying at the Lotus Feet um, Param Gurudev, that he will uh, bestow just one small sprinkle of his mercy, that I can also become such an exemplary uh, disciple and try to serve my, the lotus feet of my beloved Gurudev with only just a small fraction of his uh, surrender and determination and intense attachment and feelings of love, uh, and thereby my life may become a success. All will be ready for evening at around five. Naveen will speak. Two words. और दो तो शब्द बोले उस पांजली का दिया दो तब Prabhupadantarangaya Vinodeti Sarupine Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare First of all, I pay my humble obeisance in the lotus feet of my Guru Padma and after that all Krishna was assembled here to hear Harikatha about my Param Guru Dev Nitya Lila Prabhishtam Vishnupad Shishman Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj Our Param Guru Dev is so near and dear to Srila Prabhupad He always keep his life on his hand to offer for his service You have heard just now 
how he protect Param Guru Dev, uh, Prabhu Sila Prabhupada Bhukrishna Thakur during Navadi Parikrama attacked by so many opposite group. Some doubt may come, Prabhupada is eternal associate of Sila Siman Mahaprabhu and Divine Kapil. He could not escape his life, he could not protect his life. Why this first times that took place at that time? Because Srila Prabhupada wants to show the whole world how near and dear is Vinod Brahmachari for him. How we dedicated so much for him, she wants to show the whole world. So he arranged this first times. Once Srila Bhakti Sila Bhakti Sadhu asked Vinod Brahmachari, O oh, Vinod, can you rescue this bhajan kuti of Sila Bhakti Thakur? My Paramu replied, Yes, if you order by your blessing, everything is possible. At that time it was controlled by Sila Prabhupada's youngest brother Lolita Prasad. Paramuru De asked some villager village man and ask them takes, uh, to took some stick and what I shall instruct you will follow me only. Going there in Bhajan Kuti of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, you will jump with stick not to beat anyone and send someone as ahead that please inform Lalita Prasad that Vinod Brahmachari is coming here to take position of this place. Hearing is Vinod Brahmachari's name. He ran away from that place without any effort, it came control in the hand of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur Prabhupada. Prabhupada became very happy for this service. And as before this first times, all Mayapur was under control by Mohammedan the Muslim person. Nowadays, that job pit, it was also controlled by Mohammedan. Nowadays means? Nowadays, Jog Pit is Jog nowadays Pit. what is Jog Pit? Mm. It was also con controlled by mm. Mohammedan. Mm. So, Paramuru Dev, he arranged one. Jog Pit was in control of Muslims. Mm. As you call that area. There was no temple? Temple was there. Then how they were controlling? Mm. Jog Pit and there is some that? land. Where the Prabhupada's Samadhi is there, it was controlled and there were so many burial guns of Muslims there. So that place was in the control of Muslims. So Paramurda once <coughs> he arranged a boundary wall, the Muslim came and asked, Oh Babu, what you are doing? Then Paramurda replied, I am protecting this land for yourself only, nothing to do here, because I gave your place for yourself. As before Param Guru Dev arranged some plant, some tree, and once in night he took our devier and threw into Ganges and put that plant, someone two years, someone five years, someone ten years like this, and make beautiful garden. Next day when they came and they saw there is no grave that look like a garden, they complained to police against my Param Guru Dev. Police came, but Param Guru Dev is so bold that nothing has happened there. Param Guru Dev told, there is a grave here place. I never seen here. Here temple of Sri of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and it is garden. It is not, they told, no, it is changed in night. Then Parunga asked police for officer, how it is possible in one night that it is some three or two years, some eight years, some ten years, how it is possible? It is quite impossible. They are telling lie. Police one thing, yes, this is quite a fact. The garden not be made by one night, so it is quite impossible. So they told me it is garden of this deity. And then Prabhupada served, then Parunga served Srila Prabhupada in this way. Once, Param Pujyopad, Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Gassai Maharaj came to Mayapur, visit Mayapur. At that time, our Param Pujyopad was in white cloth and Vinod, name was Vinod Brahmachari. 
Always she used to sit and under tree of jackfruit, sitting on chair, keeping his feet on table, always sitting. So, Pujjava Sudhar Maharaj saw from far away, one very tall figure, renounced person came and do pranam, not only pranam, full prostration pranam, and full lady's hand asked something, Paramudev in same position, sitting on chair, setting his feet, keeping on the table, not doing pranam him also. And giving some order, he went away again doing pranam. So then he became astonished. Who is this great personality being a white cloth? So tall figure Sonasi came and do and did his him pranam. Again he ordered him went away. After that he came to know that this is Vinod Brahmachari who is the manager of his whole property of Srila Prabhupada. Then he is impressed so much by Srila Paramurudev. Another time, once... So time is being over, so we shall discuss again in Even. evening time. We shall hear something from Gurudev. In evening time we shall discuss is about fundamental thing like Vinodhyaya Tattastakam, Mangal Arati, and Prabhupada Arati, Tulasi Arati and Mayabad Jeevan, we shall discuss everything in evening time. Hare Krishna, Banchara Karbataru, Pashtya Kripa, Sindhu Bhaye Vacha, Paditanam Pavani, Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Your writing. Today is the most auspicious Abir Bhav Mahamahotsav of our most beloved and adored Param Guru Dev Sri Srimad Bhakti Pradyan. Om Vishnupad Sri Srimad Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goshami Maharaj. He is one of the foremost disciples of Sri Srimad Srila Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada and most dear to all the devotees of Gaudiya Math and beyond for his high degree of Vaishnava Siddhant and magnificent devotion. When I was a young man and I used to go to Mayapur for Gorpanim to see Srila Prabhupada Swami Maharaj. I would always sneak over the Ganga to Sri Devananda Gaudiyamath. I did not know anyone there at that time, but I would go simply to see the Samadhi of Sri Lakeshava Maharaj. I would stand there for a long time and offer prayers. I did not know much, only that he was the sannyas guru of my guru, Maharaj and that I felt some very special attraction and affection for him. I would pray to him to please give me, guide me on this path of bhakti and protect my fragile and Some years later, I can see that he has mercifully brought me to the eternal shelter of his dear most servitor, my beloved Shiksha Guru, Om Vishnupad Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedant Narayan Maharaj. Also, we know that Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur, as suggested by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, took initiation from Gorakishore Das Babaji Maharaj. Still, he held Bhaktivinoda Thakur as his guru substantially. Formerly, by the order of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he took Gorakishore Das Babaji as his guru. From what we know, however, he took Bhaktivinoda Thakur as his guru for the internal consideration. We find that his outside and inside was filled with Bhaktivinoda Thakur, not in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense. Also, consequently, this name, Vinod, was so dear to him that he inaugurated many moths, and we find that he named the deities Vinod Vilas, Vinod Pran, Vinod Ananda, and so on. It is no wonder then that he gave this name of Vinod Brahmacharya it will be in the right side, and later right Vinod Manjari to his most beloved Shishya, Shishya and 
our most revered Param Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj. On this day we pray, this most auspicious day, at his divine lotus feet, that he may so kindly bestow upon us a genuine greed and real aspiration to one day enter into the service proper of our divine Ishtadev, Srimati Radhika, as a servant, of a servant, of her maidservant, our most beloved Om Vishnupad Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj, and enter into that domain where all of our words, actions, and movements shall all be for her service. Your most insignificant and humble grand disciples, Champakalata Dasi and Kantashore. I'm so happy that Shripat Brajanath Prabhu, Nanda Keshav Prabhu, और दीदी वृंदावन विलासी प्रेम प्रयोजन राम किशोर ऋषिकेश महाराज और श्रीपाद ऋषिकेश महाराज नवीन है ग्लोरीफाइड माई गुरु देव एंड I wanted to tell so many things, but in the evening class, I may tell something. But I am happy to hear. Very good, interesting, and powerful. All past times of our good day, they are. So I am really debted to them for this. They reminded me so many things. Yes or no, that he told that from boyhood, that very bold, qualified, learned. And he used to go with his father. If there was any going on debate or classes of Gita, Bhagavat, and others, he used to attend all these things. His father and mother were disciples of very renowned. Uh, Goswami. Uh, he was very famous. He was the first he was yogi part. Afterward he took uh, initiation in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So from boyhood our Guru Maharaj was very religious minded. He used to write so many poems. He be, he began to introduce one monthly magazine, only by handwriting, not in press. And how he was bold, you have heard from him. He became against British government and he joined the movement of Subhashchandra After some time, at the age of sixteen, in 1916, he was so much fortunate to go to meet with Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Goswami Thakur. With or one of Ishimaya, Ishimaya, aunt. And she was the first disciple of Srila. Lady disciple. Lady disciple of Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada, Sarojini, Saroj Vasini Devi. She was also very learned and quickly he, she used to make so many poems, poems, hundreds and thousands of poems. And he was so learned that all the disciples of Srila Prabhupada used to pay respect to her. So she took with him to the Prabhupada. And at that time, at the age of sixteen, he offered himself in the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada. He was so much prabhavit, influenced. influenced by the Prabhupada. So Prabhupada accepted him at the time of festival of Gaud, Janmotsa and Naudi Parikrama. 
in a very small scale at that time, in 16, 1960s, a beginning of Prabhupada preaching. At that time there were no so many brahmacharis, only four fives. So the Prabhupada is used to mm, play on, on gong, gong, huh? gong, gong, gong. Mm. And Narahari Prabhu used to play on Narahari Prabhu uh, worshipping. Mm. At that time, or who did? It was very soft, very beautiful, but very strong personality. Prabhupada saw him and he read everything. Mm. And he, he told. Saraj Bhasni told that he told that. Oh, how you, you are telling that you will do so many Mods. mass everywhere and preach in whole world, preach in center in whole world. How you will manage? Sure. You have no so many qualified devotees or any devotee. Any sure. that. He told that, oh, by this, we know, no. well, control all things. And he will look after all. Now I am realizing that he is controlling, you. see, <laughs> all the mass of Swamiji also. <laughs> through you they were going to be you. ruined, but again new life is coming everywhere and all uninspired. Eh? And he is giving me so much inspiration to this whole world. And like a very insignificant like a drop piece of straw, <laughs> but he is inferring me to go everywhere and I'm all are hearing me. This is not my credit, but it is his credit. So you can imagine how bold and how powerful was he. He, when he returned to home after taking initiation, first initiation, Harinam, he returned to home and began to run his classes. Now he came in, in the city classes and he was so learned in Chaitanya Chaitamrita and all these things that in, at that time in MA classes also there were some classes of Chaitanya Chaitamrita and high, higher education. So um, the special teachers they used to, very philosophers, they used to take the class. So sometimes, payar uh, uh, like this, Jeva Sarupaya Nitya Krishna Das, Vishnesatasati Bheda Bheda Prakash. Like this, lo, Vadanti Tattva Vada Dastam Yajagyanam Atsarami Paramatmeti Bhagavan Niti Sabdati. Explain it properly. Then Guru Maharaj boldly used to stand up and, Oh, can you please explain? Can you please um, um, order me that I should explain? Explain. And they used to become so much surprised. How a boy, and he can explain. But he used to explain in the line of Srila Prabhupada. In the line of Baladeva Vidya Bhushan Path, so boldly, and all this to be there. After time, there became a class from them, and he told that, Oh, I want, don't want to take all these bad idea, philosophy. philosophies. And he left. Like, what, what can you teach me? Teach me. I can teach you and the principle and all. And he left his school and he joined Srila Prabhupada. Hmm. Prabhupada was so happy that a boy like him, he came to him. And in the day of Parikrama, on the very day uh, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, apparent day, on the full moon, Prabhupada <coughs> took this boy on the roof of Jogpit Mayapur and in evening he initiated. Get initiated him. So I will tell so many things in evening classes. Now the time is over. So I am giving 
First of all, I am offering this and I am praying to him that you should shower your mercy. Those who have compiled, have made, who have so, my darling daughter, Ashwala, and his husband, and especially to Rishikesh Maharaj, who brought in this so beautiful way. And those who have helped in Everything. auditing and all other Prabhu things, Prem Priya, Jannanta Kishore Prabhu and all others, I will pray my Gurudev to show, to shower them His mercy on them. So first of all, I am giving this lotus flower. He will be, so certainly he will be so much happy. If anyone used to write any book, he used to be very, very happy. So he, when I translated Jaiva Dharma of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, oh, he was so happy and he showed so much mercy to me and that is, I am realizing. So I think that he will be most, most merciful to me.
thinking that oh vijay is not here all his friends are here <laughs> and also i want feeling for my daughter and your brother elder <coughs> he is doing well perhaps very well. now we should begin our classes my book for my guru de i get to translate prem prayojan and he is doing he will tell something he was telling so beautiful in your book he should again something <coughs> गुरु निष्ठा What is the meaning of Guru Nishtha? Mm. 